Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you to our monthly webinar series, Market Insights, which is presented by International Market Centers. Um, IMC is the parent company of our gift and home markets, which are the Atlanta market, IMC High Point Market, um, which is designed on High Point Market by IMC, the Las Vegas market, and our new upcoming digital Juniper market. I'm Kimberly Porter, the Senior Programming Manager for IMC. Um, today we have Market Insights, the next golden age of design, and it's in partnership with um, Business of Home. And I want to introduce Caitlin, and Caitlin, I'll let you take it from here. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for having all of us today. Um, I'm Caitlin Peterson. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Business of Home, and I'm delighted to be here with these four incredible designers talking about the golden age of design, where we are now, um, and I think how we'll look back on this moment in time and what it means for the design industry. Um, we're going to be talking about their key takeaways from the past year, um, what they've done to move forward, um, and how they think the home furnishings industry will evolve in the near future. Um, you are all design legends who need no introduction. Um, this is literally the who's who of incredible careers and industry awards. So instead, I'm hoping each of you can start by telling us a little bit about your work, a current project you're excited about, um, the biggest change for your firm over the course of the pandemic and how you are staying inspired. And we're gonna be able to look through a few of your projects as we talk about what you've been seeing kind of in this moment in time. Um, Martin, we're gonna start with you. I think we're ready for our first slide. Oh, fantastic. So yeah, it's been a very interesting time. Um, obviously a lot, <laughs> of, uh, a lot of new beginnings actually, I guess mm -hmm. for all of us in a way, um, learning how to live through a pandemic, how to work through a pandemic and still going through the aftermath of the pandemic. <laughs> Um, I just found out that a fabric I ordered will not be in until October 2022. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's the kind of madness that we're dealing with at the moment. But um, it's all good. Um, I'm just so glad that, that we are lucky enough, firstly, to have survived this. And secondly, that the design industry is so incredibly busy. Mm -hmm. um, it, is, it is extraordinary. I mean, we are busier than ever you can't even get a sofa from from our upholsterer for 18 months or something ridiculous I and mean, it's mad but um and i've got a couple of really exciting projects at the moment i think probably the one which i'm most excited about just because it's crazy is i'm designing a home for rupaul mm -hmm. um which is going to be amazing um <laughs> with all sorts of extraordinary things from a from a dining table that mm -hmm. uh, is hydrolysized so it can instantly turn into a runway when he needs to do a fashion show. <laughs> so <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, yes, a lot, of, a lot of very fun things. Um, you can't believe the things you learn when you're designing a house for a drag queen. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you know, when you have things like that fabric that's not available until October 2022, how is that changing the way you improvise or kind of react in the moment? What, how has this moment changed the way you work? Yeah, I mean, for sure, it's, it, it's a challenge. And as usual, people want things <laughs> immediately. Yesterday? Yeah. So, so, so we're having to, you know, as much as we possibly can, we're having to find things that are in stock or, mm -hmm. of, or always come up with alternatives. I've learned now that we don't just present one thing. We're presenting three or four things as options if the first one's not available, the lead time's too long. So it's really about learning how to play the game at the moment, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we are a service industry, so we have to service our clients in the best way that we possibly can. And at the moment, that's working out, you know, what's the fastest lead time? Yeah. <laughs> Are clients so. open? We'll, we'll get there. I want to talk about having that conversation with clients, but first let's talk through some of these images on the screen. Can you tell us a little bit about what's so, here and about how, how it, what it tells us about you and your work? So this is a house in Mexico, in uh, Cabo actually. <laughs> and funnily enough, this was a photo shoot that um, I did for uh, AD 
with um, Douglas Friedman. And literally, we shot this screening room the day that they closed everything down for COVID. Okay. It was like, it was like the last thing the that last we did. The last photograph. <laughs> it was the last photograph, literally. But um, so, so this, this is a very fun house for, um, for an extremely uh, well-known uh, businessman. And th in the screening room, I wanted to have this kind of Mexican flavor, um, but be super comfortable mm. and kind of have humor. You know, I think humor is such an important part of decorating and such an important way to show people's personalities. So this room has a great collection. I think it's 16 vintage um, Mexican movie posters from the mm -hmm. 30s, 40s and 50s that are really comical, actually, and sort of set the tone for this vibe. Mm -hmm. But I think it, you know, for me, it, it says you, comfort is first. So, for instance, mm -hmm. those, those giant sofas that I put into this room, there's three tiers of them are all five foot deep and 14 <laughs> feet long. So they're incredible areas just to curl up mm -hmm. and cuddle. Get lost you in, know, right? And get lost in and, and have the dogs on there and your kids and everything. You know, for me, modern luxury is comfort. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter the style, even though, you know, we've got this sort of Mexican-y vibe going on in here. It's not about the style. It's about what it feeds mm -hmm. you, how it makes you feel. Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel welcome? Mm -hmm. Do you feel a sense of place? Yeah. And that's hopefully what this translates. I want to see now in our next slide, we've got kind of a different kind of sense of place. It's a little bit brighter, airier. It's a different kind of fun and enveloping. What, what, was, what was the brief here? What, what did you want to achieve? Yeah. I mean, fun is always, is always the lead word that I want <laughs> in my designs. Mm -hmm. um, this is a dining room for Kylie Jenner. Mm -hmm. And um, this was sort of custom designed using shades from one of her makeup kits. And, you know, obviously her makeup has made her a billion dollars. So we wanted to give a, a, a nod to that within the interior. And so each one of the leathers for these chairs was custom dyed mm -hmm. to match a lipstick from her makeup kits and then sort of ombre around the table. And then the, uh, the Damien Hurst artwork was thrown, thrown in for fun and also because <laughs> A butterfly is her favorite symbol. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of things that are very personal about this mm -hmm. space from the color to the butterflies to the playful, you know, 20 something vibe. That's awesome. In our next slide, we've got a photo of a kind of sunken seating area. Is that, is that making a comeback? Is this, what made you want to put that here? Well, that's actually my own house in the mm -hmm. desert in Palm Springs, which is a, um, it's an iconic mid-century home mm -hmm. that was originally built for uh, Roger Moore, one mm -hmm. of the, uh, one of the great uh, James Bonds, <laughs> and then later was the Playboy Mansion in the mm -hmm. desert. And so this sunken pit, I think, has seen a lot of action over the years. <laughs> That's but, worth holding on to, right? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I love the whole the whole vibe mm -hmm. of this sort of sunken area, mm -hmm. and, and this this is this has actually got a fire pit, an indoor fire pit in the mm -hmm. middle, and it's become the best place to sort of entertain, have a casual dinner, have cocktails, watch the sunset. I just love the way it feels, and it's sort of a nod that I have used now in two new projects mm -hmm. where we've created one sunken pit on the outside and another mm -hmm. one where I've done a a square sunken living room. And it just is a really great inviting mm -hmm. way to, to sort of break up a big space. That's awesome. We've got one more slide here. Tell us what we're looking at here, maybe next slide. Amazing. Uh -huh. Aha, <laughs> two slides. So, so, so the, one, the one on the left mm -hmm. is actually the uh, current cover of the summer issue of El mm -hmm. Decor. And it's a project that I recently completed in Hawaii. Um, it's an amazing, it's really a surf, well, I was gonna say a surf lodge. Mm -hmm. I guess it's more of a surf estate because <laughs> it's about, it's about 40,000 square feet. But this, um, the, the amazing staircases in this house were all designed to feel almost as if they were the backbone of the architecture, mm -hmm. you know, almost the spinal cord of the house. And so this extraordinary koa wood piece, which was carved by local artists, leads you up to a, a sky loft where we have a James Terrell, the only James mm -hmm. Terrell, a light sculpture in Hawaii actually at the mm -hmm. moment, um, leads you up to this amazing meditation loft. 
So a very special place um, that feels very spiritual and kind of, again, mm -hmm. it exemplifies the client's character. And then the one on the right is actually my living room in my house in LA, mm -hmm. which um, again is an interesting house. It had belonged to Andy Warhol and also Tina Turner. Um, and uh, in this very living room in 1962 was the first ever exhibit for uh, Keith Haring. Okay. So an extraordinary space. And it, this shows very much something that I love, which is a little nod to exoticism. Mm. It shows my passion for a little Moroccan sort of sexy element. And the house is actually a Mediterranean villa from the 20s. And I think that that Moroccan touch always adds this sort of glamour level to these houses mm. and makes them again sensual and sexy and hey who doesn't want to live somewhere <laughs> sensual and sexy that's perfect alexa <laughs> we're gonna pivot to you next what what have the past 18 months been like for you and for your firm um and what has been kind of one of the biggest takeaways for you to kick us off um well it's been crazy i <laughs> A, you know, I borrowed a phrase from my husband when it began and was talking to my colleagues on a Zoom call. And I said, you know, we land the plane or we crash the plane. There is no plan B. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just kind of fingers crossed. I didn't furlough anybody. And we just kind of held on for the bumpy ride. Mm -hmm. And and actually, some people left the industry, period. Mm -hmm which, you know, like one of my colleagues who I'd been with for 20 years just decided she, you know, wanted to move on. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, it, like everybody was kind of taking, taking stock. Right. Like, who do I want to be? Am I doing what I want to do? And some people left and some people stayed. And it was really, yeah, a lot of alcohol was had in 2021. <laughs> uh, no, we're in 2020. In 2020, mm -hmm. um, I told my husband, I was like, 60% uh, alcohol, 30% fat, and 10% law and order. Like that's <laughs> what constituted myself. But and how did that how did that flow into your design work? <laughs> <laughs> flow is the word. Um, actually, I I did some of the for my own nourishment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was working on some bedding lines mm -hmm. and outdoor furniture lines and and my furniture line, and that was something that was you know, thank heavens for that. Cause it really gave me something I could do and be solitary and do it and really enjoy myself. But um, something that Martin just said, which is, you know, so true about how the, you know, we all know that the supply chain is broken. Um, I have, you know, it's, it, and the fact that we're a service industry, I've, you know, that expression, um, you know, promise little, deliver a lot, never mm -hmm. do the reverse. And and sometimes I hate telling people, oh, you know, this is going to take eight months. <laughs> yeah. But now that it just is so universal, I feel like I'm learning better mm -hmm. how to just, you know, be frank about it and not mm -hmm. not try to dress it up or or apologize for it. Like, it's okay. It's, mm -hmm. It is what it is. And we will always have delays even when the supply chain is is reconstituted. But, um, you know, so I feel like, wow, I'm pretty old to be learning this lesson. But, it, you know, I, I'm open to it. Um, but this room that you're looking at right yeah. now, this is my family room at home. And I have turned it into, it, it's, a, it's still actually in mid swap <laughs> into my office mm -hmm. um, from home and a study hall for my kids. Mm -hmm. So, and I've also just like lost my mind. I'm like, I, I've got magenta lampshades and I've got all kinds of craziness and um I think I think I'm I think that gestational period where we were stuck mm -hmm. has left me yearning for fantasy and being okay with allowing myself mm -hmm. to partake you know nothing's nothing's too crazy for me anymore mm -hmm. you know I just want I want joy and happiness. I love Martin, what you said about humor. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm in for it. I'm there. Are your clients there too? Yeah. Yeah, they are. And, um, you know, I, I'd long been bemoaning, um, the fact that, 
people didn't want walls, you know, that they wanted open concept. So there's a, there's a tiny little part of me that's glad that we all need desks now mm -hmm. because it means at the very least pocketing doors. <laughs> and, and I love having, you know, different rooms of different colors and, you know, uh, I love, there's something very old school about that, that I enjoy. I want to go to the next slide. We've got two rooms side by side here. Can you tell us about these spaces? Um, well, on the left, so I'm, I, I'm showing you my apartment, which is interesting because it's like, as I said, in, in a the laboratory of flux right now, <laughs> like as we speak, that day bed is right in this minute being taken out of the apartment. <laughs> um, and I am painting that room like a sludgy mud color okay. um, and putting a desk in it for my husband. And then but my, um, the, the whole apartment's kind of like a kaleidoscope and I really needed to get to a certain age where I was like, uh, you know, fine. If, if I, if I lose my appetite for these colors, mm -hmm. I'll change them later. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I look at, um, gosh, I look at the work of everybody on this panel and like, I could, I could live in that pink sunken sofa mm -hmm. so easily. I could live in the Chevalier or I, Timothy, you're going to have to correct my pronunciation of it. Um, <laughs> or any of Corey's beautiful rooms. Like, I just want to be surrounded by beauty. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 it just, you know, makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next slide for a second. Again, mm, another room that's totally changing. In transition, it, yeah. <laughs> in transition. Is it all um, happening at once? Ish. Okay. Um, my husband's like, why is our whole apartment a staging area? <laughs> um, and I'm like, you know, because I'm the boss of our apartment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I think I'm going even more, you know, more fantastical, mm -hmm. um, more color, more exuberance. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't think there's, there's any, there's any reason to hold back. Mm -hmm. I think like that, that has been the freeing element of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. We've got one more slide that's going to be kind of a zoomed out view of this room. Yeah. Everything, everything is going out and coming back in different. No, 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 no. Every, I, so I'd, I'm very curious to know <laughs> what my co-panelists have to say about this, but um, no, things aren't like completely reinventing. Okay. They're kind of like drilling down to different mm -hmm. versions. And I, I constantly am talking to my colleagues in this universe of ours and and reflecting on the fact that when we work for a client, there's a point at which the project is con has concluded. Mm -hmm. But when I am working for myself, it never ends, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm never walking out the door. I live there, which means that I'm constantly switching things and changing them and almost treating my house like a laboratory. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, you know, I hope that I don't reach that place where clearly I've overdone it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't think I have yet. <laughs> but I'd be very curious to hear what everyone else thinks because it's a very different relationship we have with our own mm -hmm. house. Well, Timothy, you're up next. You were nodding as Alexa was saying that. Um, and we've got spaces. What, what spaces are we looking at from you? <laughs> okay, so I have got very bad reception, so I don't know what we're looking at. But let me just, I'll, I'll start <laughs> by saying that uh, the way we've been approaching this uh, pandemic is we're, we're currently working on 19 different projects um, in five countries and eight states. So we've already had a lot of experience working mm -hmm. remotely. We've, that's, we've always done it. So it hasn't been that mm -hmm. difficult or that much of a change for us. Um, what has been the most challenging is, for example, we're working on the world's largest private yacht, but it's being done in Asia. Well, Asia is still, for all intents mm -hmm. and purposes, shut down. So that project is, is shut down. Um, our mm -hmm. projects in Europe and the Middle East actually started up again in the, in the winter. Those are going. Um, and in the USA, we probably experienced the same boom that every, ever the, every other design firm in the U.S. has. Um, uh, so that's been really great. Um, this, is, uh, this photo is um, a photo um, of, of the way I live, which is a mess. There's always, there's always spills <laughs> and, and, uh, and dogs and things like that. And this is um, some of my fabrics and rugs for a collection I did for perennials. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really believe that if what we've really learned during the pandemic is that people really don't want to make a trade-off between how something looks and how it performs. We're, mm -hmm. We've spent more time in our homes than, than ever. And so we really want to be able to live in houses where we can 
really live in them and make a mess and not make it uh, an end, uh, the end of the world. So this is, uh, is my dog, Winston, who tends to get in and eat brie and, uh, and make a mess wherever he goes. So this is, uh, that's what this picture is of. We have another puppy, I believe, on the sofa on the next slide. We've got- Okay, yeah, well, I love sofa. dogs. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is a project we did in, in Brentwood. And I think this is an example of, um, of a room where it was the living room and the client really said, I don't want it to be a, a typical living room. I want it to be uh, really a library filled with books, fill, filled with the way we live and, and make it feel sort of cozy, almost like a den as opposed to a living room. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's what this was about and really all about um, strong use of color. And I think nobody got to see that image. If we can go to the next slide, please, maybe. Um, Maybe that was that was the, one the, the library, the library, yep. living room as library with with a wonderful dog. And then and the next the image next is slide. we've got another kind of immersive living and living space, social space. Okay, I'm not seeing it yet. So um, we've got um, a new, like kind of a neutral sofa it. with the green, yeah, with all okay, of the shades of it. green pillows, and then you can got see it. through to that. Yep bright green and, cabinetry in yeah, the kitchen. Yeah, so again, this is, this is all about, about color and it's again about practical comfort. Mm -hmm. So this is a coffee table where the outer edge is soft where you put your feet up and then it goes to a hard surface. The chair on the left is, is, a, um, is a recliner. Um, it's outdoor fabric. So it's really about living comfortably in these spaces and, mm -hmm. and, and living comfortably is more than just the physical aspect, but the, mm -hmm. the actual, the practical aspect that you don't have to worry about how you live in that space. Mm -hmm. We've got a close up on the next that photo. kitchen after that, that okay, bright great. green cabinetry. Tell me about that. That was really, again, it's really all about, um, I, really, I love, I love color. I love color in kitchens, particularly having some, some, some boost of color because it really brings so much life and vitality to that space. Um, and so here we actually, the kitchen opens up onto the gardens. So we used green uh, because we really wanted to make a connection between the garden and the, and the, uh, the kitchen. And during this whole project, I think that um, during this whole process of, of, of the pandemic, um, I've been struggling because I've, uh, I'm in the middle of redoing um, uh, a chateau in France, which I've wanted to get to, uh, <laughs> and then just only been able to get there within the last six weeks. Um, so that's been, it's been interesting managing that process. I also from moved afar. apartments in Paris <laughs> during the pandemic mm -hmm. from afar, um, uh, bought a new apartment without seeing it, um, uh, moved into it without, you know, did all the paint without seeing it and then, uh, and moved in. And so I'm now in the process of actually, I just got back from last night from uh, putting furniture in place, both at the Chateau <laughs> and at the new apartment in Paris. Well, so congratulations. It's, been, uh, it's, it's, it's been great, gr great to go back to France at least. <laughs> We've got one more photo from you. It's a really beautiful, okay. um, like kind of glassed in garden space. Okay, and this is a project we did in Lake Forest, um, mm -hmm. which was we took uh, the greenhouse on, a, on an estate mm -hmm. in Lake Forest and uh, turned it into a wonderful um, living room, indoor outdoor living room. Mm -hmm. So we uh, heated it and air conditioned it. Um, and so it really could be used um, year round as this mm -hmm. sort of great space um, that is truly indoor outdoor. And you can see the pool just beyond. Um, and again, I think it's, it, it sort of represents the, my design style of no matter how beautiful a room is, it's not successful if it's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Last but not least, Corey, you are next. <laughs> how, are you? how have you been doing? You also made a big move during this pandemic. Yes, I couldn't help but laugh at um, what Tim was saying with his very first photo with the dog, mm -hmm. because one of my big transitions was giving up dual residency in New York City and Michigan and moving everything exclusively to New York City, uh, and then having a dog here in my home and working from home, and she has a habit of always wanting to get on the sofa or to distract mm -hmm. me or knock something over <laughs> during a Zoom call. So when yep. Alexis was doing her speaking, of course, she timed that to come over and try to start barking. So if you saw me grimace on the camera, guys, it was not <laughs> anything that Alexa was saying. I love your work, Alexa, you know that. But it was because my dog was literally nipping at my heels. So, <laughs> so puppies been, are welcome. Transition. Yes, puppies are welcome, except when you're on you know, Zoom calls. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's been a fantastic... Um, um, journey. It's been a fantastic voyage. Uh, what a huge transition. Mm -hmm. uh, released my first book in March. 
uh, made the big move from Michigan to New York City, filmed my, my, my upcoming masterclass, instructor series, uh, all that happened while we were in various, you know, formations of mm -hmm. shutdown. Uh, and of course, number one and, and, and foremost, you know, managing my client's expectations as we mm -hmm. maneuver and, you know, meander through this, you know, pathway that is sometimes um, uh, unpronounced. We don't always know mm -hmm. what tomorrow will bring. So yeah. it's been interesting. I have Tell no us. hair left to pull. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this image. Oh, yeah. So this project was uh, featured uh, with Architectural Digest mm -hmm. uh, actually earlier this year. And uh, one of my uh, last projects before I moved from Michigan, lovely mm -hmm. couple, we built this house from the ground up. Um, and it's a classic story of being a diplomat where the couple is split, has very disparate views as to what they wanna do. Uh, and I have two images I think in this series with you where the husband wanted great neutrality and the wife wanted lots of color. And so this is the process where we you know, took the color red and really kind of um, celebrated that for the wife in a very judicious way. Mm -hmm. um, I know that people will sometimes drag a designer for curating books on a bookshelf, but they actually do own these books. Uh, it just so <laughs> happens to be there are a lot of uh, uh, red and, and mm -hmm. you know burgundy uh, uh, books. Uh, so they are there. And I just happen to put them on the shelves and make <laughs> them look great. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun to do this project. That's awesome. Your next slide for us is that incredible Kips Bay room you did a few years ago. Um, how does this space, I mean, how does this space make you feel kind of after the pandemic and where does that fit into kind of the design world today? Uh, that's a great question, Caitlin. You know, when we do these projects for Kips Bay, and I know that Martin and Alexa and I are working on Kips Bay for next, mm -hmm. next month, next month already, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> We, we're not given a lot of time to concoct these mm -hmm. creations. You know, we have literally weeks to do it. And so with 2019, when I was given this uh, gentleman's space, I wanted to redefine it and make it into a ladies library because mm -hmm. I really believe that women run the world and they are the cradle of civilization. And a lot of times wives need their designers. Um, let me put it this way. We, I work with clients who have very um, interesting relationships where the husband and wife have a certain dynamic. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy um, being the advocate for the wife to say, you know what, I believe she needs a, a lady's lair or a lady's library. I'm gonna give you a gentleman's study at this end of the house. Mm -hmm. and I wanna design this space for her. And then she takes me out to lunch after the meeting because it's like, <laughs> she knew that she needed that space. And I felt mm -hmm. good being that advocate for her. Yeah. So this lady's library was kind of like that prototype mm -hmm. of what the woman of the house, the, the woman in command, uh, her business, raising children, you know, like I said, running the world. What does that space look like in the 21st mm -hmm. century? I feel like having this moment for, you know, a quiet moment to yourself resonates even more after 2021 yeah. or after yeah. 2020, um, which is pretty amazing that you were able to kind of put this out into the world right before that. And now this before. is where we all need to be. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've had so many clients now ask for a ladies library. So many mm -hmm. husbands now saying, give my wife a great office a because she needs to run her business or run her firm. And so mm -hmm. we've been doing a lot of those. And speakeasies too. Lots of places <laughs> to drink. <laughs> we've got, well, we've got a bedroom from you up next. Okay, let's check is it out. Is this, maybe, um, is, it's, it's got kind of that green, like layers of green and there we yes. go. Is, is this yeah. the is this the is this ne the negotiating couple who were bartering on color or? No, no. This okay. couple was pretty much they were very congruent in what they wanted mm -hmm. to do. Caitlin, um, they wanted this guest room to really be a wow factor. So mm -hmm. while their personal principal bedroom was much more neutral and soft okay. and serene, mm -hmm. they did want to get more adventurous in the guest room, which I thought was rather funny. Like you mm -hmm. want to sleep in serenity, but you really don't <laughs> care what your guests sleep with. But I'm just kidding. We did want this space to be fun and vibrant mm -hmm. and sexy and vivacious mm -hmm. and you know lots of pattern play and when their guests come over they're like oh my god we love this space it's so fun uh they do sometimes wonder about you know uh, the chandelier and it's, it's so high up and it's like <laughs> you know they're gonna come down on us i'm like no and if it does you know 
that's a great way to go out, I guess. But anyway, um, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a great project. I really think yeah. the guest room should um, really celebrate hospitality and really mm-hmm. give our loved ones, especially now coming out of this pandemic or mm-hmm. working through this pandemic, there'll be more gathering, more mm-hmm. um, association, more hospitality, more visitations. Mm-hmm. And people are going to be doing it at home versus going into hotels, at least for a while. The next photo we've got from you, I love this room. It's also the cover of your book. Yes. Um, tell us about this space. Um, this uh, space was actually um, a, a historic home in Michigan. Mario Bawada, the great Prince of Chance, actually decorated this home in the early 1990s. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I came behind him and, and renovated it uh, in the uh, early 2010s. And um, what was funny about this project is that we lacquered all the millwork, this you know beautiful navy. And that was a bit of a sell for the clients to kind of take historic millwork like this and go for this bold color. But it was fun. Um, they really were willing to come come abroad, come aboard the, the mm-hmm. idea with me and make it work. Um, but what was interesting about choosing this for the front cover of the book, it was really decided, you know, by our wonderful publisher at Rizzoli. Uh, they have an eye for what catches the eye, uh, and this was this was the, the choice that everyone agreed upon that kind of mixed in color and pattern and, and, and the vibrancy. Mm-hmm. So it was a, it was a lot of fun. That's awesome. Well, we've got one more from you. It's a Yes. Kind of almost the opposite in some ways of that really kind of co- the enclosed cozy millwork. Right. Where was yeah. this? This was also in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Mm-hmm. Um, lovely, lovely uh, husband and wife couple. This was a project where, again, we had to be a good diplomat. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> this got the front cover of House Beautiful in 2020. And mm-hmm. um, what was funny about this is that the husband wanted you know, white and beige and gray. She wanted jewel tones. And so it was really about discussing between the two of them. What can I do for you to make you happy with this mm-hmm. room? What can I give you to make you happy? Bring them together and say, okay, listen, I'm going to give you white walls and a beige ceiling. I'm going to do this emerald velvet sofa for you and shots of, you know, cobalt blue. And everyone came together because it's about discussion and negotiation and diplomacy. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said in the article, this, the house does not need to look like me. It needs to look mm-hmm. like you. It's like delivering a baby. It should look like the parents <laughs> because it is going home with you. Mm-hmm. And so um, this project, I think, really reflects this lovely couple and their very disparate personalities when it comes to taste and color and, and t- intolerance for pattern. Oh, this has been amazing. I want to ask you guys about what you're experiencing now and kind of get everybody together talking here for a minute. One thing that's really interesting is, you know, I feel like so many, you've all mentioned really shifts in some ways in client behavior. And I wanted to know what, what's changed about the way that clients are making decisions about the way that clients are buying um, and how have you had to adapt in response? Does anyone want to jump in first? Well, I, I think that they, they are very surprised at how long lead times are. I mean, lead times have always been difficult. Um, we just ordered some outdoor furniture um, and we're told that it would be delivered next March. Um, and um, I think- Martin can put his shocked. fabric on it in October. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> people are just shocked by that aspect. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think the biggest, the most difficult thing right now is, is managing their expectations, as, as Alexis mm-hmm. said. Um, and just really sort of being very honest with them um, about that. And I think, you know, exactly as Martin said, going with multiple options so that they, mm-hmm. they actually do know. Um, we, we go, we check all lead times before we present them. Um, mm-hmm. So we know that we, and what is supposedly available, but it's amazing how many times you will present something that you've checked in the morning. And by the time you get back in the afternoon, it's per stock. So, I mean, I think it's really about rolling, going with the flow right now. Mm-hmm. Is that, I mean, I think, I think the clients are also very grateful. Mm-hmm. Um, grateful to be alive, to have such problems. Um, there's definitely frustration at lead times, but if the, you can, I, I frequently feel like as I look into their eyes that they're frustrated, but they're like, I know how fortunate I am. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk myself down off this ledge. <laughs> um, because it, it, you know, there's no, there's no disguising what we've all mm-hmm. just gone through. And being a good fiduciary is about more than just managing our clients' finances. It's also about managing their emotional, you know, and their expectations as to what we're going to deliver for them. And um, I think as long as the clients are informed in advance, 
um, we've actually re rewritten our letter of agreements and we've mentioned, you know, you're going to be paying a significant amount of freight charges. There will be extensive lead times. Um, we may not be to install, we may not be able to install the house right when you want it. It may be about when all everything comes in, when we're available, when it's safe to come into your home, when it's safe to travel, we need uh -huh. everyone to be humble and willing to be flexible. And honestly, Caitlin, to your question, in the interviewing process, if I'm sensing that the client's going to be difficult along those lines, if they're not willing to meet us, you know, in the middle and be a real partner, I've been saying no to a mm -hmm. lot of opportunities because of that, because it is a life, not lifelong. Look, it, it should be a lifelong, but <laughs> at least a few years long yeah. work of relationship. And life is short. I've already lost all my hair. I have nothing else to pull out. So <laughs> <laughs> let's keep it nice. <laughs> I, I put out an ask on Instagram to see what I should ask all of you since you're all here together. And I got a question from a designer that I really loved, you know, kind of in line with the sourcing delays and, you know, clients responding to that. They also wanted to know really how you are sourcing these days um, and how you stay inspired. Like what does discovery look like for each of you right now? Martin, can I start with you? Yeah, it's been very interesting because, you know, I usually, I'm usually on a plane at least once a month, mm -hmm. um, traveling around the world, visiting different projects and, purchasing everywhere I go much to the horror of my accountant <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and of course I mean I just got back from the first vacation in 18 months mm -hmm. so literally for, for 18 months we've kind of been having to sit still and not do anything and so travel is usually my number one inspiration mm -hmm. but one of the things obviously that I found to be very inspirational um, is via social media. I mm -hmm. mean, without a doubt, Instagram has been amazing. Mm -hmm. Pinterest has been amazing. Um, you know, you've, you deep dive into these things and sometimes you're gone for a couple of hours, <laughs> not realizing it, but you come out with, with so much information at your fingertips, mm -hmm. which is amazing. I mean, it's really the way that we're designing forward. Mm -hmm. And so... That's been a great uh, addition to to mm -hmm. the way we stayed inspired. I have to say as well, you know, I've got two big libraries full of books, one at home, one in my office, which, you know, I go to for reference now and again. But during the pandemic, I really got to spend time with my books. I and, love that. and I found amazing things, beautiful work from, from you know, other designers and historical elements and wonderful travel books so much inspiration that, that that was amazing so you know for all of us listen in life whether you're a designer or not I feel like we should all be like a sponge where every day we just absorb as much as we possibly can mm -hmm. because you never know when you're going to need to use it it's true how else did everyone else stay inspired what what were you what were you reading or scrolling or or tapping into Timothy, I'm a lot, a you know, lot it's of interesting because I'm developing um, a third collection for Schumacher and um, a second one for Perennials. And that was really good for me to have, Alexa mentioned that she was developing a collection, some collections as well. It was really good to have, have to be looking at different sources for inspiration and looking at what, what inspires you and then, and then actually drawing and designing. Um, I think mm -hmm. it's really, um, it's great to be doing something that's not specifically project related. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, where people, whether people are doing watercolor or whatever they're doing, they're painting, they're doing other things. It's so important to continue to um, ex stretch yourself that way mm -hmm. creatively. Because um, I think that's really where the, 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 the creative juices start to flow. Alexa, I cut you off earlier. Sorry. The floor is yours. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Um, I was just saying that, yeah, Instagram. I, I've mm -hmm. been living on Instagram. Um, but what you just said, Tim, it's like creative adjacent to anything that can feed creativity. And I wanted, one of the things I love doing, you know, when like you're a kid and you, you, you'd you watch those things on VH1 about like how the stars became the stars. <laughs> I love reading kind of like origin stories about all kinds of people in different businesses, um, not just in design. I love reading about you know, fill in the blank, whether it's a writer or somebody in tech or whatever. Um, I love those stories. I find them very exciting. I find them very inspiring. And I like, 
I like, um, you know, thinking about what they're doing and trying to apply it to our industry. And it's also been amazing that everyone's been available. Mm -hmm. You know, when you are designing something, like instead of, um, you know, the ceaseless back and forth of emails, I just FaceTime. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I, you know, did a, a bunch of things like in a week. Because <laughs> I could just pick up the phone and call the person and we just do it. We just bang that out. Mm -hmm. um, and that was great. Yeah, I loved that. And also, yeah, I, I, I took great solace from Instagram and seeing like all of my design brethren friends. You know, it just makes me happy to see what they're, what they're doing, what's going on. And it, it made, it, it created a community. I mean, yes, social media is a social media. And I was like, okay, we're all here. We're alive. We're, we're mm -hmm. looking at things and we're communicating. Cause it was, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, I've, I've never in my adult life, none of us have ever Put done what we just like did. Before? Yeah. Um, the January before our lockdown, I was on 21 flights. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I was like, what does an airplane look like? <laughs> you know? But you know, it's interesting. I think that you talk about Instagram and I think Instagram is great as a jumping off point. I think it's wonderful, but it, the problem with Instagram is it has no context. There's no, there's no depth to it. So I always find, gee, if I find a great image, then I try to figure out well, let me go research that place, that 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 yeah. that that thing. Try to get a better understanding of why that room is the way it is. If it's an historical room, etc., how it was created, when it was created, etc., as opposed to just looking at the surface view of what Instagram mm -hmm. provides. Corey, how are you? <laughs> I can take it with context, with no context. I'm like just, I like to just give it to me in every aspect of life. Just more, more, <laughs> more. <laughs> Corey, how did you stay inspired? What was your creative lifeline in this time? Uh, museums, mm -hmm. when they were when they could be open and they mm -hmm. were safe to visit uh, museums. Um, I did launch a new collection with Left Bank Art of mm -hmm. uh, hand drawn portraits of faces uh, because I did start to really miss people's smiling and laughter mm -hmm. and just the mouth. And so I named it Mouths Wide Open because I drew a whole bunch of people in various, you know, mm -hmm. different races and cultures and different, you know, expressions, facially speaking, of the mouth open, laughing, mm -hmm. shouting, crying. Um, so I found inspiration, I think, in, in the human species, our mm -hmm. beautiful human species, and just seeing how everyone around me was reacting. Uh, I think having moved full time to New York during the pandemic, um, I got the chance to see many more millions of people on a daily mm -hmm. basis. Um, and it's very different than say Michigan where you have to drive and go, you know, we're, we're much more in the country. You're like going um, to people, right? Versus just sort right. of experiencing them whether you want to or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> and so I think just looking at the, the, the mix of architecture just mm -hmm. here in New York City, the neoclassic, the modern, the Italianate, just seeing all the different types of, of structures here, these new little skinny buildings that are being built up mm -hmm. that are very controversial, you know, all of that I found inspiring. Um, um, but I am ready to get back out into it. I'm ready, we've mm -hmm. been flying, we've been trying to be careful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and we're looking forward to seeing, hopefully some resolution to all of this in the coming mm -hmm. months. Is there, is there a stylistic shift that any of you see coming out of this pandemic? Are you, you know, you've seen these new things in books on Instagram. Are you taking cues from those new influences? Are your clients responding to different things than before? And I think, is there a trend or a motif that we'll look back on this time and say, oh, that was sort of distinctly like of this pandemic moment or this post, you know, this kind of post pandemic phase that comes after it. Is there anything that's bubbling to the surface now for any of you? Corey, you're nodding. Yeah, I think that the dining room as a concept has dramatically shifted in people's uh, minds in terms of its value. Before the pandemic, everyone was saying, oh, who needs a dining room? We only eat for the Christmas <laughs> and holidays. And, mm -hmm. But now everyone's using their, holiday, their, their dining rooms to educate their children, mm -hmm. to pay their bills, to run their God businesses. Help us. <laughs> yes, exactly. And my heart goes out to all of you guys because I don't have any kids yet. But, but I know that my clients are saying, you know what? That, that dining room we scratched off the floor plan, that 
we kind of want that compartmentalized space back in. Can we mm -hmm. somehow rearrange the walls before you, you know, put the frame in to accommodate this new space? Can mm -hmm. we wrap a library around the perimeter of the dining room so that our mm -hmm. kids can pull books down and study and then we keep our eye mm -hmm. on them? Even with the dining room table, Caitlin, um, mm -hmm. we're now designing tables that have um, uh, outlets, USB drives and things that can be wired to the floor for lamps and for mm -hmm. cell phones and for iPads. It was, it's, it's changed and mm -hmm. whether it's permanent or not, I don't know, but it's, it's certainly reflective of the fact that people need to use every bit of their houses mm -hmm. for the time being. Martin, I saw you come off mute and I say, did you want to jump in too? Oh, I was, you know, it's been interesting because obviously the way everybody uses their home has changed so mm -hmm. much. And um, as Corey was saying, you know, obviously people have been working from home, all of us have been working from home and finding ways and places to do that in. Um, two of our recent projects, though, funnily enough, all want spaces designed that um, are for uh, Zoom. Mm. They want to make sure they've got like special areas where they've got mm -hmm. perfect Zooming backgrounds and setups. <laughs> the light which set is up and yeah. perfect lighting. I mean, I'm used to that for so long that, you know, working with the Kardashians and people where you had to add special lights in the plaster and the mm -hmm. ceiling so they look flawless when they're filming. Um, so we've been used to all those weird tricks along the way, but th this is definitely an interesting time with the way mm -hmm. people are looking at their home with a new understanding of, you know, maybe there'll be another lockdown, they need to spend mm -hmm. another six months in their home and how do they really feel they want to live in that space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've, I've loved, like Corey was saying about the dining room, mm -hmm. I have loved the fact that people have suddenly been, you know, using their silver and laying their tables and mm -hmm. getting out grandma's china, you know, and, and being creative in that way and having these wonderful dinners, even if it's just for themselves or, or their family. Um, that's been a great way of expression. And it's sort of been interesting to see and understand that um, Tabletop mm -hmm. has sold more than ever in the last year, which is extraordinary. So that's kind of a fun thing to have come out of the whole pandemic is that people are learning to entertain with style again. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, it's a detail conversation. Mm -hmm. um, if people think about their house and, oh, I want the, so this amount of seating in my living room or these certain attributes, now they can get granular. Mm -hmm. you know, now they're just looking at it all the time and, and getting a deeper appreciation of what they might want or need. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think our clients weren't really spending that much time at home, just as, as we, we were not, they were not. And so oftentimes we would talk about making their homes places of sanctuary and yet they were at dinner at restaurant every <laughs> yeah. night they were mm -hmm. traveling everything else and i i, I what's been really heartening heart is getting phone calls or emails from clients saying you know all those things you told us that we needed in our home we're now actually experiencing and you're right we really and we really appreciate it because they are using their home in in a new mm -hmm. way that they hadn't before so i think that's really wonderful that clients are beginning to understand the importance of their home mm -hmm and how it, how it works and supports their needs. Mm -hmm. And some of my clients do not intend to go back to work physically in the same, mm -hmm. in the same way that they did before. They're, they're gonna have a modified existence, which is sobering. <laughs> like, wow, this is- the, Forever. The, we got some scars here. We, yeah. We, yeah. Yeah, this is permanent. I feel like clients are also somehow becoming more decisive because of the shortages. You know, um, we can't get foam, we can't get frames, we can't get this, we can't get, you know, Martin's fabric until October and some other stuff, Martin, that I'm trying to get from your collection that I can't get right now either. Um, it's, it's the new reality because of what mm -hmm. we're all going through. And so I feel like clients are now becoming much more decisive. It's not like when I say jump and, you know, just please jump. They're now saying, no, let's jump. Let's spend the money. Let's get these orders in. Let's get those CFAs. Let's get that approved. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how proactive you are. I am no longer sure. dragging you to the water to drink. I love it. So I'm hoping that that is a change behavior that will will hopefully, you know, go far beyond this moment. Is that a response <laughs> in some ways to, the, are you explaining the process differently? And so they're like, oh, we've got to jump. We've got to jump. You know, have, have you changed the way that you're talking about that piece of the project in a way maybe that you will keep in your process beyond this moment? I'm telling clients, I'm using the term um, EOD, 
end of day, <laughs> everywhere. Text messages, emails, or seven days. I need a response within seven days. I need an answer by end of day. I need this because you have two chandeliers in stock. If you want one, I need in, an answer end of day. And so they're and they're responding. It's not like mm -hmm. intrusive. They're like, no, I get it. I have the money available. Go ahead and charge because it's going to be gone because I'm not the mm -hmm. only decorator pulling from this inventory. <laughs> so end of day, seven day turnaround. Job. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, <laughs> we had a question from the audience and it was um what digital ability or technology did you find or more aggressively employ in the last 18 months that was so consequential that you can't picture the future of your business without it i want to expand that to digital but also to things like what Corey was just talking about in terms of client management are there just are there changes that you've made that you're like, well, this is now, you know, this was a response to the pandemic, but this is now something I'll do forever. I do more renderings now, mm -hmm. many more renderings, because it just, you know, it's gives so much information right then. Mm -hmm. And if yeah. I can't go over and sketch it for them or show them the various things, mm -hmm. just show them what you think would look best and then let them respond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've and we've changed, and we're doing a lot of digital boards now. Okay. So we've been we've been really creating before where it was much more about touch and feel. We've mm -hmm. literally been doing them on digital boards and putting that together with the rendering and sending that over. And you know, with a Zoom call alongside of it, mm -hmm. you tend to get people to sign off. It's been amazing. Do people so, still get to touch and feel? Like, are you sending them samples as well, yeah. or is it really? Yeah. Well, actually, during the, in the middle of the pandemic, it was very hard to get samples. Mm -hmm. um, and so certain people kind of like just jumped in and were like, okay, we trust you. We're going to go okay. with it. But in, in, in normality, yes, we still like mm -hmm. to send like a FedEx package along yeah. so that they can touch and feel because that's what this business is. It's a touchy yeah, feely yeah. business. Absolutely. So, we're, you know, so we're one of the few industries that really you have to touch and see and feel and sit in and, mm -hmm. you know, to really understand the quality of it. But, and, um, I, and I think that's why it was so complicated and difficult for us as an industry to be working remotely because we, as a firm, you know, within our firms, the designers needed to be able to touch and feel and be able to talk to each other and things like that. And you really were limited to how much you could do remotely uh, from that, which is why it was, it's been so valuable to be able to get back into offices to work, as, at least in the design firm. Uh, I think other industries we've seen, it's not as necessary, but within design, we need to be in the same office. With our designers. Or yeah, you're not going to pick a paint color somewhere else. Right. <laughs> you got it. You got to right. see like how the mm -hmm. light affects the paint in situ. Mm -hmm. Was there was there anything like that in the pandemic that you kind of had to let go of, or were you were you able to find workarounds for things like that? I, I think when I you're the boss, you can go and do it because if you catch it, you catch it. Yeah, <laughs> but you can't put anyone else in the in harm's way. Mm -hmm. I, I was always loathe to ask clients or builders or, well, not so much builders and contractors, but I was always loathe to ask clients to take a picture for me or take a measurement or to go on site and do a FaceTime with me and do a panoramic. I always felt like, oh my God, I should be the one doing that. I only trust my own measurements and I just don't, I want to do it myself. But now if I can't get on a plane to Canada, we're doing a, a lovely project in, in um, Toronto. I can't get there because the border is just now opening literally this week. So you're having to rely on the client's eye and say, please triple check your measurements. Show me where <laughs> the quarter of an inch is at. Take a picture of the, you know, like I want to see everything, but Again, telling them we're a team. I'm here for you. Please be an mm -hmm. advocate for me. I'm all about accuracy. Can you please? You know, I want to impose, but I need this measurement to make sure this fits through your front door. Yeah, you, and you they don't are, have to yeah, fire them. But I think it actually makes it. That, <laughs> yeah, but you know, what's interesting is when you do that, you actually you're all on the same team. When you ask mm -hmm. them to get involved, they actually do feel more a part of the process, and I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I we are rapidly approaching our cutoff time. This has been delightful. I could talk to you all, all day, but I have one closing question. If you could offer fellow designers one word of advice for navigating the industry right now, what would it be? Get the best accountant you can find. <laughs> <laughs> the one who lets you buy and take on your trips? Be nimble. Mm -hmm. there's, be more than one way, there's more than one way to get things done and you, you can figure it out if you put your mind to it. Mm -hmm. 
I would say always keep pushing yourself to learn and to grow. Don't let your, don't live your life in autopilot. Oh, and Corey, wait, and be, what was yours? I would say be humble and check your egos at the door because no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my husband says to me every night. <laughs> no one gives a damn. Check your ego at the door. <laughs> Thank you all so, so much. Um, any parting words? This has been such a delight. Thank you all for making time for us. Um, thank, thank you to you. IMC for hosting us today. And thank you to everyone in the audience. Um, you've been an extraordinary audience. And thanks for joining us. You've been a fantastic moderator, Caitlin. Thanks oh. for having us. Yeah. yeah thanks. Right. Be right. well, everybody. Right. Love you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks.